So something that's often overlooked when it comes to everyday carry is a handheld light. People might have weapon lights, but they don't have a handheld light. And I don't mean just some tiny little rinky dink light that has like a hundred lumen output. I mean an actual handheld light where you can actually see at distance, where you can actually overpower people's vision, an actual useful tactical handheld light. And there's plenty of options out there. Something like this mod light, handheld light, has great output, it has great battery life, all this stuff, but this is a pretty big and bulky solution. And trying to keep this in your pocket every day, even if something cool like the Theorem Switchback, can be kind of annoying. And you might wanna to go to something slimmer and more low profile. For me, for quite a time, it was the Streamlight Wedge. The Wedge is really cool because it is very thin and low profile. It is a, it's not very wide and it's not very thick. So it's pretty easy to put in the pants, to put in the pocket with your keys, with your wallet, your phone, what have you, and be able to pull this thing out and still use it. And when it comes to output, it has a nice 300 lumen mode and then a thousand lumen temporary throw mode that gives you a greater output, more lumens, more candela for when you're in those more uh, threat oriented situations or you just need a little more illumination. Now I've been carrying this for a couple years and it was pretty great, pretty useful, but recently Nightcore introduced a new competitor to the market that I think has now taken the cake for the most affordable and effective EDC light on the market. Now this is the Nightcore EDC 27. This is only $9 more than the Streamlight Wedge at $89 versus $80 for the Wedge. $80 is very affordable, but $89, $9 more for the amount of features you get for the EDC 27 is 100% worth it. And what are those features exactly? Well, we'll get into that right now. So the biggest feature that the EDC 27 has that makes it worth more than the Wedge is a rear button. Um, that is a big complaint I had with the wedge is that there was no rear actuation. The fact that I had to actuate with my thumb here and actuate this little toggle um, that I couldn't just press in just here on the rear of the light body, unlike something like this mod light handheld where I can actuate right here very easily. That is something that Nightcore saw and they corrected that issue that Streamlight did not. Now, not only does it have one standard button, it has two buttons. So you can actually alternate between different modes. You can do quite a lot with these two buttons and a lot more than just the two modes offered by the wedge. Now, what are these modes offered by the Nightcore? Well, first is a 15 lumen mode. It's pretty basic. You just press in and you're at 15 lumens. It says 15 lumens. And then it says you here, I've got 36 hours and 58 minutes of battery life remaining on the 15 lumen mode. And this is a great little task light. You know, if I want to read a book, if I want to read an instruction manual, I'm working on something. If I just want to see, you know, really quick, just a little bit of illumination, this works really, really well. However, 15 lumens is not a whole lot for more task oriented stuff where I'm really wanting to see stuff better. This is very discreet. If I just want to look around and I don't want to draw a lot of attention, this light's pretty good. It really looks like I'm just using my iPhone light or something without actually draining my phone's battery, but I can step it up a notch. I can do a half press and I can step up to 65 lumens. Now this decreases my battery life to about 12 hours because it is a brighter output, but this is a great general task light, right? I can look around, I can work on stuff. I got to work on my car. I drop my keys, whatever. This works pretty well but we got more options. I half press again, and now we're at 200 lumens. And this is a great search light. This can be a good task light, a good working on things light. And I'm down to three hours and 48 minutes of battery life. And three and a half hours is still pretty good battery life for a 200 lumen light. And I can see things pretty well. I can search, I can do tasks. It's a pretty useful light. And it kind of bridges the gap between a tactical or threat oriented light and an administrative light. So if I go one more click in, I go to the thousand lumen mode, about an hour and a half of battery life, which is comparable to like this mod held mod light handheld light with an 18650. It's very similar to about an hour and a half, 90 minutes of runtime. And it's this nice slim form factor. And what's great about this is this thousand lumen mode is great for things that are beyond the administrative realm where I'm now searching for a threat or I've got a very big building I need to illuminate or a very big area or I'm outdoors or something. So this gives me a lot of illumination, a lot of light and uh, it is nice, so that way if it accidentally gets turned on in the pocket or something like that, you don't end up burning a hole in your pants because that thousand lumen mode, mode will get very, very hot. I've even got a little hot indicator right here. Now that was only this top button right here. There's a second button, this more flush recessed button, and that is for the turbo mode. The turbo mode is 3,000 lumens. That's right, 3,000 lumens. 
That's more lumens than this. Now, it's not all about the lumens. Candela matters too, but that's still a lot of output, a lot of brightness, and a little handheld pocket EDC light, something a lot slimmer and smaller than this mod light. Also has a much smaller light head. Now, this does actually use two bulbs and instead of just one of like the mod light or even the stream light wedge, but that's how it accomplishes that 1000 lumen and 3000 lumen mode. So if I press in right here, it goes to 3000 lumens and then there's this little bar and as I hold it down, the bar is gonna tick away and when the bar goes all the way down, it drops down to 1000 lumens. So it can only be at 3000 for so long because this does get very hot um, at the end here, like it's very, very warm, but it gives you 3000 lumens for a decent amount of time. That's gonna be a very powerful light, right? You shine that in someone's eyes, that's very overpowering. Um, you have a threat, you have someone, an unknown, you shine something that bright in their eyes, it's gonna change their thought process and it might even change them from a threat to someone running away. So. This could be very, very useful in a self-defense situation, in simply a situation where you're in such a dark area or you have so much distance that you need to illuminate, that 3000 lumen mode is gonna be very useful. Now there is one more mode or feature of this, and that is if I press and hold, it goes to a 3000 lumen strobe. I don't care for this at all. I don't care for the strobe whatsoever feature. I think it is silly and ridiculous. It looks really cool in a fight scene in a movie where the lights are strobing and you see the hero and he's flashing in and out between the light. but I don't want that in a self-defense or searching or data gathering situation. When I'm gathering data, when I'm in a self-defense situation, I wanna be able to see the entire time whatever I'm illuminating. I don't want my light going in and out. Maybe the strobe could be good as a distraction or a disorienting sort of thing, but overall, I'm not a huge fan of strobe and I prefer consistent output, so I kind of wish they got rid of that and instead I could just do like a constant on or something instead for the partial press versus full press, but it's not the end of the world and it's really one of my few gripes with the light. Now the light also does have a lockout mode. I don't use it, but if you press and hold the button in the right sequence, it's in the instruction manual, the light locks out. So if you want to lock it to just one output or you just want to lock it out completely based on what you're doing with it, you can do that. Um, sometimes inadvertently it gets activated if the lights like push the buttons pushing up against the right way. When I'm sitting down, depending on the type of pants I'm wearing, I will lock it out and then I have to press and hold but it's only locks out the big button. It never locks out the uh, the small, or the I guess the recessed button, it never locks that one out. So for self-defense purposes, it's not a huge concern because I'm never locking out the button I really need for a self-defense or emergency situation. I'm just locking out the admin button and I can always toggle through that and unlock it if I need to just by pressing and holding the right sequence of buttons. And you can all find that in the manual or on their website. So other than the lockout mode, which I'm not a huge fan of, and the strobe, my only other gripe is the belt clip. On the wedge, the belt clip is much higher. It is basically flush with your pocket, but the pocket clip here, it does not go flush. It stops here. It attaches right here, and then this area is all fixed. So if I slide it in, it stops about here, and this much sits out over the pocket. Now, the reason it is like this is because the buttons are here. So, you know, I don't know if there's a way they could do it where the screws would not interfere with the button or mount in some way where it doesn't interfere with the button, maybe be a wraparound or something. Um, so that way I can have a higher pocket clip, but I would much rather take a rear actuator right here versus having to have this weird side toggle or something like that. So the trade-off's definitely worth it. It's still a gripe I have with it, but I understand why it is there and I don't have as much a gripe about it as I do the strobe mode, which I think is just completely worthless. Lastly, when it comes to charging, you have this little flap that you open up and you got a USB-C, so it's a USB-C charging light. Um, that's one of my big issues with the Surefire Stiletto, other than its ridiculous price, you're like $200 plus, while these guys are $80 and $89 respectively. The Stiletto also charges with micro USB, which is a dying uh, breed in terms of a plug and a cable. So having this uh, USB-C here is much nicer, very easy to charge, just like with the wedge. And both of these do include a um, charging cable out of the box. So pretty easy to find a USB-C cable and it does come with one as well. If you guys enjoyed this video talking about the EDC 27 and the wedge from Streamlight, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you think a real man carries a full handheld light like this from Mod Light, well, go ahead and leave a dislike then instead. Otherwise, guys, go in the comments. What handheld light do you carry every day for your EDC, for duty, for work, what have you? What do you carry every day, and why do you pick that over other things on the market? And do you think you'll be going out and trying this Nightcore EDC 27? Nightcore did not pay me. They didn't send this to me. I bought this with my own money, and I gotta say, this is quickly becoming my favorite EDC light that there is. 
Otherwise, guys, go ahead, subscribe, and stay tuned because I'm releasing new videos every Saturday.